Hey there, Scorpio. Welcome to part two of your reading for the week of January 24th. This is part one right here. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet, it is pin the uh, pinned comment down below. So make sure to watch part one. 11-11. I just realized when I started your reading. That's awesome. <laughs> I love 11-11 if you haven't noticed. But um, So uh, part one is linked up down below. But let's uh, just get started. Let's go through and start clarifying. Uh, in your um, With the Raven Spirit, you have the Sea Turtle. It says stability. So there's clearly a lot of stability coming in for you. Remember, in your first reading, we were basically talking about how it's like you, um, I feel like you're, number one, rejecting any limitations that other people could be putting on on you just in general. It's like if people are saying, uh, like, how much more do you need? You should just be happy with what you have. I'm not saying we shouldn't be happy with what we have and, uh, and grateful for the things we have in our life. But if you feel that you can accomplish more and grow more and build more, then do it. There is no reason to settle. <laughs> People who say that they want you to settle, again, I believe are trying to drag you down. Maybe not uh, consciously, but you know, it's kind of like, you know, sometimes I think when we outgrow people in business or love or other areas of our lives, it kind of points something out in them that where they're not willing to put in the work. So I kind of feel that for you, but you're definitely creating more stability. And again, I feel like the big question here is, is the grass greener on the other side? Which, you know, again, intuitively, I feel like the answer is yes, just in general, but we'll see. So let's go. Uh, this I didn't, <laughs> this deck is uh, upside down. I didn't even realize. But anyway, you have the uh, Seven of Cups wrong camera. You have the Seven of Cups coming up with the uh, lovers. It's like being spoiled for choice. Remember, with the lovers, we were talking about how you could be at a crossroads or you could be having decisions to make in your life. Uh, really, the Seven of Cups says, don't confuse yourself. Figure out what your values are. It's like when we understand what we value, um, some, th what things are important to us, then we can work backwards. And I kind of see you doing this where you could be saying, okay, in love, I want a person with these values um, or with this value system or this belief system. And then what you do is you write the list and you say, okay, where would a person like this be? I don't know, maybe they'd be at church. Maybe they would be at uh, the gym. Maybe they would be uh, in another state or something like that. I feel like not enough people work backwards like that. It's like, we, we can do that. Same thing business. It's like, you might uh, start a business and you might be like, okay, I want my I want to work. The, you know, I would work backwards. I would say, how many hours a week do you want to work? What do you want to do? What do you want your job to look like? Get super detailed. And then when you do that, then you can find something that fits into your values. Seven of Cups says, don't confuse yourself. It's like, you could be adding on values. A lot of people do this. Uh, I once saw a guy um, in business like years ago and he, he broke this thing down on a whiteboard where he's basically saying that a lot of people think they need to make like $10 million a year or something like that to live the life they want to live. But he broke it down on a whiteboard and really you only need to make like $200,000 a year or something like that. I don't remember how much it was, but it doesn't matter. The point is, is people kind of like, I think overestimate like how much time, effort and energy is needed to live their dream life. It's really probably not as much as you think. And, um, you know, this card, you know, I feel like this is saying work backwards from what you want, right? Make it as big as you possibly can, right? Make it as much as you can. But I think you'll find out that you probably need less effort, less, less work and all that other stuff. So it's like becoming easier in a good way. Uh, with the two of pentacles, you have the justice card. Justice is like creating balance and the two of pentacles is also like balance, you know, kind of like ju juggling, balancing things out. I do get like a little bit of overcomplication here. Uh, I think I said this in the first reading. Um, so I do feel in a lot of ways that there could be, and I kind of feel that now with the seven of cups, like I said, it's like you could be overestimating what is required to, again, meet your values, to meet your standards, whatever you want to call it in your life. Uh, again, I, I feel like writing down a list would be a really good idea. I always tell people like in love, write out a list of everything you want, pick your top three traits because we're all too picky, right? So pick the top three things that someone must have. I would also write a list of oh no no's. You know, there's like things that you absolutely will not accept in a relationship. And then I would find someone with those top three traits. It's like everything else is just icing on the cake. Nobody's perfect, right? We're not gonna find someone who has everything on our list. It's just not possible, right? So what I would say here is if you can find someone who meets a list and then you can make it work, then great. Uh, and again, the oh no no's, here's the problem with writing a list of oh no no's, is like the first thing, you know, the first thing that's gonna happen is that the first person that you're gonna attract into your life, life is gonna be your, your your entire list of oh no no's. It's like the universe saying, are you serious? Or like, are you, are you really gonna pass this test or are you gonna fall for it again? So, you know, just get that out of the way, right? Right, right up front, right? Um, and that's what I would do there. With the ace of wands, you have the king of pentacles. 
Yeah, I, I really feel like you're, the grass is greener on the other side. I feel like this is the second time I've done this reading for you, Scorpio. I feel like I said something like this to you recently. So I feel for a lot of you, it's like whatever change you're making, it's gonna be more permanent. King of Pentacles is a permanent change. It's like, you know, move, creating something new with that Ace of Wands and then uh, whatever the change is, is going to be permanent. Uh, I like the King of Pentacles. It's um, permanent. Even in love, it's, you know, an energy of permanence uh, can represent a permanent connection coming in for you. It could be an earth sign. Uh, wrong card. I, I'm actually going to take this card because I pulled it. You have the deer spirit. It says power. So I do feel like some of you could be gaining power. I feel like this is about you gaining power in general, mostly because of that queen of wands. For the 12th house, you have the sixth house, which is sustainability. What do you know? It's like when we kind of move towards our values, then things become more sustainable. We were kind of talking about this again, um, you know, with that seven of cups, it's almost like you're, you probably need a lot less than you think. And that's more sustainable. It's like, trust me to make like $10 million a year, probably have to work your ass off. Right. Um, I'm just guessing, you know, uh, but what I would say is like making a lot less and still living your dream is probably more sustainable. So I feel like you're moving more towards this like sustainable uh, six house type of energy where things are maybe a little bit more not not easy, but easy for you. You are able to kind of maintain your standard, right? Uh, with the Page of Cups, you have the King of Swords. And I feel like if there's love coming in for you, it's someone who has a lot of wisdom. Could be someone older than you. Uh, not always true with the King of Swords. I, you know, I do think kings can be older people, someone who's older than us. And again, it doesn't matter what gender you're attracted to. I don't attach gender in my cards in a general reading. But what I would say is I feel like it's someone who has a lot of wisdom, someone who just knows a lot of stuff, probably a person who has had many, many life experiences. King of Swords could be younger than you, but it's just someone who has had a lot of life experience, someone who has been through many different things, and that's probably what makes them successful. Uh, with the moon, you have the Knight of Cups, Knight in Shining Armor coming in for you here. There is no question here. <laughs> Remember what I said in the first reading, I was getting all these questions, or just one question, is the grass greener on the other side? With the Knight of Cups, I'm getting no question. It, literally, those are the words that are popping into my head. Uh, so if this is love, you know, there could be no doubt that this person coming in for you is the right person if you're looking for love. If you're not looking for love, Knight of Cups, he is normally looking into that cup. He is dreaming of his future life. He is dreaming of what he wants in the future. He just has to, you know, make it happen. He just has to put in the work, but pretty good card. With the Queen of Cups, you have the Queen of Wands. Uh, definitely keep your eye on the prize. You have the Queen of Wands twice here. Uh, the Queen of Cups I read is you, Scorpio. I say this all the time. You know, uh, you know. I know most readers read the Queen of Cups as uh, Cancer. I read her as uh, Scorpio. I have several reasons for that, but um, it doesn't matter. And what I would say here is that I feel like this is your energy, the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Wands. It's like you're stepping into this more bold, more willing to go for it type of energy. So I, I definitely like where this is starting to go for you. Now you have the Ace of Cups wanting to pop out there, by the way. Uh, I don't take pop outs, but it is interesting. Uh, so in your last row, you have this April card and you also have this cracked cup. It says dissatisfaction in life. I don't necessarily feel that dissatisfaction is a bad thing. Uh, four cups is a card of dissatisfaction. In the same row, you have the four cups right here. So sometimes if we're dissatisfied with the way things are, we can change it. It's like, thank God uh, we do feel disappointed and dissatisfied sometimes because it leads us towards something better. If we didn't feel it, we would always be in this energy of not being fulfilled, right? <laughs> so I feel like you're moving more towards fulfillment. This is why the grass is greener on the other side is because I feel like you are feeling this dissatisfaction. Uh, what do you know? Uh, with the Queen of Wands, you have the Seven of Pentacles, literally a change in direction. He is looking at those pentacles and he's saying, is the juice worth the squeeze? Is there something else I could be growing? Is there something better for me? Which is what I said to you in your first reading. There is definitely something better for you <laughs> uh, on the other side. I'm going to pull an extra row. We're just going to see what's on the other side after this, but uh, that's that. Uh, get to work, Scorpio Hermit, you have the Knight of Pentacles. Like, what are you waiting for? Uh, definitely time for you to get to work. Time to start planting new seeds. Again, Seven of Pentacles, yeah, you've already grown stuff in the past. It's just not as, it doesn't taste as good. That's probably green beans and you could probably be growing something better like that people actually do wanna eat like watermelon or something better, I don't know. Watermelon's my favorite, if you can't tell, right? But what I would say is like, nobody eats green beans. Everybody who says they eat green beans and Brussels sprouts are all liars, right? Um, and But everybody wants to eat watermelon for the most part or grapes or something better, something sweet that actually tastes good. And so I feel like that's what you need to plant over here is something much better in your life. Uh, with the four cups, Hermit, it's like you already found, you already know. I, I feel like you already know that it's time for you to make a change. 
And so let's see what is going on over here on this other side. Uh, you have the Five of Swords, definitely gonna be a risk. Like I said, if you, the resistance I feel for you is other people. Um, like I said, other people saying, why can't you just be happy? Why can't you just be X, Y, and Z? Again, I never listen to those people um, because um, you know, to me, that's a limitation. There are no limits. We live in an abundant universe. There's no reason to put limits on ourselves. Uh, next, Six of Swords, moving on to Commerce Shores, definitely making a sacrifice. Like I said, you are clearly leaving behind something though. Uh, you know, Six of Swords is kind of like uh, leaving behind baggage. The mother and her child in this boat, they're leaving behind their entire life. They're starting over completely from scratch when they get to the other side. So they are taking a big risk in moving on to the other side. That is the point of the Six of Swords. They're taking a big risk to go over to the other side but the risk is worth it with the Six of Swords. They're moving towards calmer shores. So I do feel that if you're making a decision to move towards something new, it's much more sustainable with that sustainability card. It fits into your values, like we said as well. And I think it's just gonna be better for you overall. Yeah, Empress Energy, there you go. <laughs> uh, abundance, success, good things coming in for you, feeling much better, a much more abundant energy to live in as well with that Empress. So any change you're making, I feel like is going to be much more uh, valuable to you. With that Five of Swords, you have the Six of Wands, success, abundance, yeah. And look, this is a card of envy. The people behind him, they might be jealous of his success, but uh, guess what, who cares? Um, like I keep telling people, who cares what people think right now? And trust me, I'm a Pisces. Like I you know, care way too much what people think. And I, I've been working every single day, literally. It's like one of the thing, one of my goals for this year was, is to work on it to just stop caring. Um, because again, I feel like the world desperately needs people to be examples right now. And so it, it's like, if you're gonna be an example for other people, if you're going to become more successful, if you're gonna get into that relationship that is like, you know, quote unquote perfect. It's like, yeah, the haters are gonna come out of the woodwork and they're gonna be hating on everything that you've done because you know people don't people can't see it for themselves. So that's why people hate in the first place. Number one, hating is easy. Number two, um, it's, uh, you know, they can't see it for themselves. But again, there are people who desperately need to see you be successful. So that's why I keep encouraging people to be as successful as they freaking possibly can right now because the world desperately needs it. Uh, with the Six of Swords, you have the Ten of Swords. Definitely, like I said, definitely moving on, completely sacrificing something. Doesn't really surprise me. I don't think this is a bad thing either. It's like that Seven of Pentacles says you're changing direction. Uh, you know, we talked about this in the first reading. We've talked about it in this second reading. You're clearly moving on to something new. And the Empress, Netta wants a whole new adventure, very spontaneous, exciting energy as well. Really good reading, Scorpio. I feel that in a lot of ways, it's like, yeah, there could be some pain, Ten of Swords, although he's dead. Does he feel pain anymore? No, <laughs> is the answer. He's dead on the Ten of Swords. You don't feel pain after you die. So he's like completely moving. He just needs to realize that he's dead. He needs to undergo the transformation. So I feel like for a lot of you, it's like, you know, again, it's just continuing along with that first message of attaching yourself to your values. It's like you're moving on to this new, into this new world. Yeah, you have this, um, I almost just threw that. You have this hyena spirit, it says fear. But like, there's a choice. There's two ways of looking at things, the dead side or the living side. So I feel like you need to choose happiness, with the, your own happiness with this card. Very interesting reading. I kind of like it. Definitely a lot of abundance coming in for you and um, you know, a much more sustainable life as well. I think things are much more uh, sustainable for you. It's easy for you to keep up with this life that I'm seeing here. So I like that. Uh, thank you for being here, Scorpio. Really appreciate it. Make sure to watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you. Also, part one is linked up down below if you didn't watch that yet, but um, uh, definitely looks pretty good to me. So uh, thank you for being here and definitely enjoy your week.